and welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take a minute Hello. break, uh, and just have a chat about what's going on in Linux, open source, this week, portable streaming pies, but more on that at 11. I am Vin Stone, joined every week uh, and <laughs> by Jill Bryant in LA, <laughs> wearing a hot, <laughs> hot, uh, what is it, AliExpress? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> penguin dress. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't usually wear dresses, so this is a big deal for me. But it had to be Penguin for the show. <laughs> and from the Isles of Britannia, bringing sexy back with that Stormtrooper t-shirt. Way, way back. <laughs> way back, man. <laughs> this is a five-year-old t-shirt at this point. <laughs> this is one Pedro Mateus. And um, hey, everybody joining us live. We're going to kind of jump into it, man. So what's everyone been up to? Uh, I know yesterday... Uh, Boston Dynamics, they, they make the, uh, let's just mm. call them Terminators. That's what they're going to yeah. be. <laughs> they torture robots, yes. Dude. <laughs> yeah. Man, they released like two videos. One, doing straight up like gymnastics. I'm like, yeah, okay, sleep while doing that. And they're like, then this other one for like their spot, this one looks productized. Like this thing's going on sale and you can buy it. So I had to make sure that I could, you know, maintain four miles per hour for 91 minutes because that little critter can oh, do that's three miles life. per hour for 90 <laughs> minutes. Right. Oh. I just wanted to make sure I'm safe on that during the morning jog. Turns up. I'm good. <laughs> All right. Cool. Awesome, Ben. <laughs> awesome. All right. What's up with you, Jill? Oh, well, I had a wonderful time and very good entertainment last Saturday chatting with uh, Linda Tepler, Sorcerer Zero in chat, and Lola Larissi. We had a great time, and it was like we've been friends forever. We had so we have so much in common, so that was, it was just awesome. What did you drink? <laughs> no, I drank, drank green tea. You went on a beer <laughs> podcast and you had tea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> As one does. But it has caffeine in it, <laughs> which is a big deal for me. <laughs> Says, says the person drinking water. Pedro, what's up? Yeah, see, my drinking's been cut down to uh, Saturdays, but uh, yeah, well, I, good news, I guess. Uh, the, it's more money I spent, but um, Solovar finally came back and said, yo, we got boots. It's like, finally, there you go, take my money, shut up, <laughs> now give me the boots. So yeah, once they uh, once they get here, I, I, I'm sure I will be very happy to wear them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh man! Like, Momentarily, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe you'll do better than that dude on um, Reddit's uh, Tesla thing, where he's like, "I ordered my Tesla and they sent me a Fender." <laughs> oh! <laughs> I thought that was a little dangerous, but you know what? Don't get worried, man. Until like the next shipment's an Allen wrench, you're like, "Oh no!" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> don't. It's buy IKEA your, Tesla, yeah, right? Don't buy your Teslas through <laughs> IKEA referral links, man. They got the wrong idea. Good news, everyone. A program that I've recently learned how to use is at 1.0, to which Yay. I think a lot of people on the internet went, wait, it, it's not at a point release? No. Nope. Really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, and yeah, it's technically so, so. still not there. <laughs> yeah. Well, this is uh, the Ink Inkscape 1.0 beta 1 is now available for testing. Yay! We've been waiting a long time for this. And last June, we ran the interview of Ted Gould, co-founder of Inkscape from Scale17x, who talked about the much-anticipated upcoming Inkscape 1.0 release. And what's the one of the big deals about this version is they are moving to GTK3, which allows Inkscape to support high DPI on Linux. And that is really, really wonderful. And they've added new live path effects, extensions, and new themes, and a whole gang of uh, um, utilities and configuration and fixes. And um, they are asking the community to test the beta and report bugs. So that would be awesome. I've already downloaded it, and I'm going to be uh, sending in some bug reports. It's really awesome. Man, you got to have a little more faith. You can't download something and be like, I know it's got bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely really happy to see that. They're going to yeah. have support for high DPI displays because that has always been something you have to fight with with Inkscape, especially on UHD monitors, which I have too. 
and it, it's mice type. Like, ooh, that that was genuinely my first Google search after opening the program. It's like we we gotta mm-hmm. fix this. And there's not like a universal like just in big and all the things. It's like I make this bigger and I make that kind of bigger. Yeah. Really happy to see that it is a very yeah. cool program. Extremely <laughs> mature for something that hasn't hit 1.0. Officially, yeah. it's Pedro. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is the beta for that. So, well, one of the things that uh, I noticed, is like, oh, theming support. Wait a second. So, when mm-hmm. I open Inkscape for just removing that stupid shadow uh, off of a certain um, KDE theme, because mm-hmm. that's about the only thing I use it for, <laughs> it's just <laughs> find a shadow, remove the shadow, and save the <laughs> thing. And there we go. Now the shadow is gone. Uh, and it's like, it, it always looked so. Early 2000s. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like, it's very square, very functional, whereas now theming support's like, oh, really? I, I, I oh. distinctly remember the first time opening this. Like, is this thing client-side Java? Or... <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it. it, it had, yeah, I, it's I awesome. know those feels that you're saying. I, I, Nori arts quite a bit. Has she ever tinkered with Inkscape? Uh, I tried because uh, she uh, she said last year, it's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to have to use um, Adobe Illustrator. Mm-hmm. It's like, why don't you try Inkscape? It's like, I don't like this. Okay, then use Illustrator. I don't like this either. It's like, oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Order an easel frame. Well, I'm like, here you go. Oh, well, I think my, my <laughs> students are going to love it, the new version, because it's pretty and, and it looks more like Illustrator now. So... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It'll definitely get you thinking with vectors and um, fun times. Definitely fun times. But Plasma 560 90s out, and that's something to do with KDE. Yes, yes, it is. And speaking of betas, this is uh, the start of the KDE 517 beta. Uh, basically, everything that Yay. shows up in the 516 90 um, release will be as a sort of a test to the upcoming uh, 517, which is nice. Uh, That uh, fine, fine gentleman in the uh, picture there uh, is Guillermo Amaral, who lost his battle with cancer last year. So they are giving him a major, major props with the post. But yeah, moving on to the um, new uh, stuff that they're adding. The uh, SDDM, like the uh, desktop manager, session manager, whatever you want to call it. I love the uh, night color overhaul, man. You can do it. Just, if somebody doesn't know about that feature, just cut it off. Don't make a mess with people. Yeah. Somebody says, yeah. you come back next week, they bought a new monitor. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, SDDM now actually uh, is able to see the user theme and like set the same wallpaper and the same theme that you have going on in your session, which I guess it's better late than never, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh the they allow now for managing of Thunderbolt devices. Like if you plug in several different uh, Thunderbolt devices, uh, KD will give you a little really nice GUI actually that basically mm-hmm. gives you okay this one's active and it's in use. This one is active but it's not a trusted device, so it shows up in yellow. It's really good stuff to see. And another very good thing to see is uh, if you've ever had to access a free Wi-Fi at like a coffee shop or something, you usually have that portal that comes up before it lets you through <laughs> to the internet in general. Uh, and you need to say, okay, yes, I agree to the uh, terms of service. And on Linux, chances are you've had the experience that you tried to access that page, but it wouldn't show up in your browser, and you went to like mm. Google.com because that's usually the uh, the redirect that triggers it. But sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. Mm-hmm. Now, when you plug into when you connect to one of those uh, free Wi-Fi's, KDE will actually give you a little notification. It's like, yo, there's a little portal here that's expecting you to do things, and just click the button. There you go. Dude. Just very nice to see. <laughs> so. As a diehard mm-hmm. KDE fan, I used to be myself <laughs> way back, uh, pre yeah. 4.0. That's a stretch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? No. Uh, no, I, myself, I, a diehard KDE fan. <laughs> uh, when was the last time you used a different desktop? Um, today? Mm. XFCE at work? <laughs> <laughs> On the precision? <laughs> On your primary desktop. You quit, quit dodging. Uh, it was Mate and it was... Uh, over a year ago now. Infinitely better desktop. Um, 
<laughs> I'm fishing for some hate mail. Uh, we got to come. No, uh, the current state, what I'm really getting to is like with KDE is because I saw some people talking about that. It, do you think a lot of the like ah, sluggish, horrible KDE still comes from that, you know, first rollout of KDE 4, which was sluggish and mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that horrible. was horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And 5.0 was horrible when it first came out. It wasn't until version 5.16 that we're currently at mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that it became actively usable. There's still some niggles and K- the KWIN compositor is still crap, but at least they're uh, they're improving on it. And they even got those patches from uh, NVIDIA to hopefully uh, sort out that situation. But yeah, th- there's still some niggles there. And I do hope they get them fixed because as a desktop Mm -hmm. For me, it's got everything I want it to do, including, Mm -hmm. like, setting rules for specific windows. That's the big one for me. You go there, you go there, you're this size, you're full screen, you're this, you're that. Done. (laughs) Right on, right on. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, I think this was actually really cool because, you know, the the KDE challenges we talked about two weeks ago of... um, usability with apps and consistency, Wayland and and apps um, being uh, found in KDE are being worked on. And this release mm-hmm. definitely does prove that. Um, like we were talking about the night color settings now work on X11 and its user interface has been redesigned. And there's been a user interface, um, new user interfaces in, in a lot of the elements um, which have been upla- updated, including displays, energy, activities, the boot splash, desktop f- effects, and many, many others. So they're really holding to the word on that. Definitely. More usability and they with kinda, apps. Yeah, they <laughs> have to give GNOME some competition because, like I yes. said two weeks ago, GNOME, for all of its flaws, and they have many, uh, the, like, the apps, yeah, they're all in the GNOME Software Center. Uh, the like the consistency and the continuity between one window and the uh, desktop environment itself, it is basically down pat at this point. Mm-hmm. And Wayland support, yeah, that is just very important. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's Dude, amazing. That thing's gonna be crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about, Ven? It's right around the corner. <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> uh, I want to believe, Pitcher. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what do you think the under and over of like shoving a desktop manager? Do you think it'd be possible to containerize it? Oh yeah. yeah? That, oh, we've yeah, already definitely. seen that done with yeah. KDE uh, with flatpacks. Reliably. There, there's some issues. Do you think maybe uh, we could like, turn it into a snap? <laughs> you could. Yeah. Why you'd want to uh, is yeah. a whole Because then I can make question. it number one at snapcraft.io, where this blog is from. All of this in our show notes. But Pedro, tell me about it. Yeah, so uh, fine, fine folks at Snapcraft. Hi. Hi, Wimpy. <laughs> uh, have decided, let's, uh, let's get... Like all the distros that are actively using Snap, let's get a list of the most installed snaps on all of them, uh, or at least the top six. Uh, yeah. And you see, <laughs> Arch, uh, mm-hmm. Spotify is at the top. CentOS has got uh, something a little di- bit different, but it's got Spotify in the top five as well. Then you have Debian, Spotify, duh. Uh, Fedora, Spotify, Manjaro. Spotify and uh, Ubuntu, <laughs> which Spotify is not number one, but it's number two. Number one yes. being uh, VLC of all things. It's like VLC. Yeah. Huh. Uh-huh. I know you might be thinking that's a weird flex, uh, but you know, stats track. I mean, it's being, it reads like it's being, it's like for things that people really don't want to go through the trouble of installing. Like, hey, <laughs> yep. I can just get it. it. It makes sense when you think about it as a portable mm-hmm. app, not really being a portable app, but. So mm-hmm. he's like, I can just put this in, yeah. take it out. I don't have to worry about a system wide install. And Spotify comes to mind. I need to listen to music on the work computer. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, I was expecting mm-hmm. Spotify to be on like the more desktop oriented distros, but sent. <laughs> yeah. Spotify is in the top five for sent. <laughs> what about. <laughs> I was expecting Skype to be a little bit higher, but then again, I don't know. The last time we talked about the Skype snap, it was 
egregiously out of date with yes like mm-hmm. you know yeah. most microsoft skype versions for linux but it's yeah uh you do see uh skype I- in use in some of the distros but the big one for skype anyway is skype for business and that's a completely different protocol that's mm. link so it yeah it's the um it uses the sip protocol mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and regular skype doesn't really do that so it makes sense that it wouldn't be as high. Mm. Well, I think this was really cool because look at all these multimedia apps that are now being being um, used uh, are the top five for snaps. Um, this actually really shows that audio and video are working better in snaps because that wasn't a real issue when the Discord snap came out. The audio was horrible in it, and they've mm-hmm. really improved that. So th- things are looking up for snaps. They're, the performance is much better, and obviously and they're just running smoother nowadays awesome yeah <laughs> there mm-hmm. they are that's uh on like iot devices server side mm-hmm. i've said it again and again easily make a case and i'm like that makes sense on the desktop mm-hmm. i'm not sold yet maybe it will be there'll be the one thing that snap does that's the equivalent to julian fries and I'm like done <laughs> that's brilliant so. You know, it's great to see Snaps getting uh, use, and clearly uh, people are uh, very, very happy with the Spotify Snap. Mm-hmm. Maybe, mm-hmm. you know, in the not-too-distant future, someone will do something about that stupid lowercase folder. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. <laughs> right after Aww. they get done with, like, cluttering up um, Dev. With, um... <laughs> yeah, like, let's mount all of the things. It's like, but that's supposed to be a container. Shh. Shut up and mount. It is. You don't know what you're talking about. Go away. Hey. No. Elite mouse hacks, custom mouse commands in Linux. You too can do it at home in less than a minute. That's what this video will show you, followed by some handy dandy instructions from your friendly neighborhood old man, Vin. That's me. <laughs> what we're doing here is something that's very simple, but I needed to know whether or not I could. And if you have extra buttons laying around on your dribble, I'm going to say put them to good use. And we're going to do that with X bind keys. It's not limited to like a single input. Now, 100%, my first thought was, here's the true, true with the story. I'm addicted to the Logitech free spinning. We call it the clicky scroll wheel. That's mm-hmm. a, that's our advanced technical name for it in our community. <laughs> and it's just being able to remove any of the um, clutch from the wheel. So just free spins. You can go click, click like that to zoom down a page. So I was like, okay, there's got to be a way. Because I knew I was getting this moon device. <laughs> that, that, that's a mouse. That's it's not a diseased <laughs> loaf of bread, mostly. Um, or the eye of sword. It's got a tumor. Cut it out. <laughs> right? So here's what I was thinking. Was I have, I'll have like left and right click on the scroll wheel, you know, up and down. I was like, I'll just make that page up and page down and I'll live with it because I got this for editing video. Turns out that there was a better way to do it. I found something better in Clicky Scroll Wheel, but I ended up still using it on this because I had functions three and four on the mouse. So now I have mm-hmm. page up and page down. It's easy to do and uh, you can do macros. It's not limited to just, I needed one command. I could do page up control shift alt w butterfly man i can go full metal xkcd in this thing and it might be hand, handy with um games pedro like if yep. you want to like actually have uh-huh. a undetectable macro <laughs> <laughs> oh it will be detectable because if the game is actually looking for macros and the developers are actively aware that people might be using macros to benefit themselves they could easily like see how quickly each key is being pressed and if uh all three keys are being pressed at once it's like ah, look that's a macro <laughs> goodbye <laughs> possibly it might be a thing but uh, go play with it check it out mid video mm-hmm. i mean you have if you're like me you didn't even know that the scroll wheel had a left and right button on it like what okay so you have those two buttons go play with them do something creative so, you know, <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Have hey. fun with the gerbils. <laughs> well, you could script it to shut down um, and log off if you wanted. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. Hotkey command. Boop. 
which would be, f I mean, see, this is my problem. I understand you're like, Vin, you're about to say something malicious. Yes, I am. Uh, <laughs> to randomly buy to like left click on your coworker's computer. To power off. Yes. <laughs> Make it right click. Don't, <laughs> don't be that gangster. Make it right click. So um, go forward. Mm -hmm. Have fun with that. OBS Jill 24 yeah. is out. we got some new hotness. Oh, this is this is great. So last month we talked about the OBS Studio 24.0 release candidate, and now the official version has been released with lots of updates and bug fixes. And they've added an option to automatically adjust bitrate when congestion occurs. That is really, really good uh, when the internet is acting wonky. And it fixed they fixed a number of issues with Linux window captures. And also, I thought was really awesome, is on Monday, it was announced that Twitch is now a premier sponsor of the OBS project. Way to go, Twitch. And yeah, they know everyone's using, you know, OBS. So it's it's for their benefit as well <laughs> that they uh, <laughs> give them lots of money. <laughs> so. I think I speak on the behalf of like the internet, of, like what you weren't already. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they. they uh, Were they, you still banking yeah. on that extreme thing <laughs> yeah. working out? <laughs> well, the developer was saying that they've been working with the engineers over at Twitch for many, many years. So this was really wonderful that they solidified that partnership. Dude, so. I thought that was like very good. We are using. Um, I compiled uh, 24 like two days ago. Hammered on it. Awesome. I like it. And yeah, that dynamic bit rate, that could be very, very useful if you have unreliable intermittent internet connectivity, which we've all suffered mm -hmm. at times. And being able to change that <laughs> dynamically is a great idea. And no, yeah. I'm not talking about your Wi-Fi. Seriously, people, quit trying to stream on Wi-Fi. I see that question <laughs> in the OBS Discord. It's like, I'm dropping frames and I'm losing connection. Uh, but I'm really close to the router on Wi-Fi. No, no, just, just, just stop. Just don't. <laughs> One thing I did notice on this end is I think Pedro, uh, no, it was Jordan that ran into it a couple of days, a couple of weeks ago, maybe last week, week before last week game, is sometimes you would have missing textures and it'll be out of color, out of sync. Mm. So that's something like one game I've had that issue with was Rocket League. So now I didn't have to uh, swap the red blue, do that swap or the awful list texture Mesa work around. That worked out of the box, which I noticed because I launched Rocket League and I'm like, oh, that looks bad and wrong. Good thing I knew what that was. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah, go to properties and you can set that. I can report that deck link or black magic cards, the output, that's working fine. Didn't have any issues. I always like to test that because we're about to change some things that we're going to be relying on that hack to do another thing. That worked. Um, one thing I've always been curious about, wouldn't you think, Pedro, that using dedicated output hardware would use less CPU resources than using the built-in full screen projector and just sending that to another monitor? Yes. Question mark, shrug emoji. It should, yeah. It should, yeah. <laughs> what I think, judging by that and the lag, is I'll, I'll have to go actually digging around in the code. I think they're using um, like a lo local loopback with FFM bang. Mm. Oh, yeah, okay. that would create a bit more, yeah. yeah. Lag, yeah. <laughs> That's definitely a thing. <laughs> anyway, that always struck me as odd. OBS web sockets, because we use tablets to do the switching and all that. That works fine. No problems there. And Pedro, you tested it streaming this is the first time i yeah. tested it streaming yeah the, i tested it yesterday because uh i was playing around with it beforehand and it's like oh version 24 is out oh it's in the repos all right let's update uh and yep it works just fine uh no unusual weirdness at least on my end so yeah mm. good on you obs <laughs> yeah wonderful <laughs> no, i'm down with that um one thing i'll be putting together because if you remember before, there were packaged versions of OBS. And I know a lot of people are like, where do I get this? Well, I'm sure there's a PPA, but maybe you're wondering how to build it yourself or you want to build nightlies. I'm going to simplify that because it's been a while since we've updated that script from the dark ages. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> to get you up and running. So Vulcan, it's not just for gaming. No. <laughs> no, it isn't. And... Uh... Don't you want to do the Streamlabs thing first? Oh, yeah, I got to do that, don't I? 
<laughs> yeah, that was right after. Because you did okay. another thing. <laughs> See, yes. I don't like talking about this You did three videos too much. this week. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick, if you're going to be using OBS, something you might want to do, and we're not talking about just donations, but we're just talking about overlays in general. Using Linux browser, you can use that. We're using that for chat and um, stream notifications with Streamlabs, but you can use StreamKit, you can use Discord. This is a more up-to-date guide than the one I made a few years back about getting your dependencies installed, how to get OBS browser, the latest version of that, up and running, setting it up in OBS and activating it. Then you too can have a dancing penguin. Yay! Yep. <laughs> there, are you happy? I did what I said in the notes. Get off my case. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so... That's all very well and good. Let's get back to Vulcan because, uh, yes, Vulcan is the future and fine, fine DX folks. That's the future, uh, bro. <laughs> Microsoft, I think even Microsoft has Come on, man. We're, we're gonna my, I'm going to get a DX12 accelerated desktop for my WinRT tablet. <laughs> you'll, I'm sure you'll get one on your Xbox. Uh, but no, this is Bliss OS. And Bliss OS is, uh, it was created, I think, they released like a uh, fully working version with uh, Google Play support about a year ago. And now yeah. they have decided mm -hmm. to update it uh, to uh, support, uh, what is it, Pi? Yes, Android Pi with Vulkan GPU acceleration. Yes, Yay. no more, uh, well, you do still have GLES there, I'm assuming, but the, um, the like the entire uh, interface is using Vulkan acceleration, which is awesome. And of course, this is an x86 release, so you can just grab an old laptop, which is what I plan to do, uh, load this up on there and play around with it. And yes, it does come with the uh, Google Play Store, so you will have access to all the apps, which is very, very nice to see. Mm hmm. <laughs> Don't yeah, in my experience, it was much faster than the Android Oreo version I tried a while back, about seven months ago. Yeah. This was much faster, <laughs> and, and it's much a uh, uh, lot less bugs, too, as well, I've noticed. I guess if you're looking for a slice of pie, Android pie, um, Android <laughs> pie, with that little bit of Vulcan, do it. Uh, do keep in mind, one of the big features is sleep state, CPU sleep state, partially kind of work now. So keep mm -hmm. that in mind when your battery is <laughs> dead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, putting your x86 uh, laptop to sleep, it's not the same as when you put your tablet to sleep. Just saying. <laughs> I don't take my tablet to the vet, man. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, one of the things I hope comes out of this is more developers pay attention and we get some proper, like, Vulcan implementation of, if not X, then at least Wayland, but something over here in linux proper land would be nice <laughs> like legitimate vulcan accelerated window manager next five years yeah i oh, hope it's in the next two that. years yeah hopefully under <laughs> optimism in <and> stereo <laughs> but yeah no in the next five years absolutely that's cool mm -hmm. man uh i do too i, I I, I just think of the nightmare. For me, I'm excited about it. I'm excited about pipe wire. Yes. I think that's going to mm -hmm. solve a lot of problems. But, mm -hmm. not that, but it's going to be a chaos time for everything that mm -hmm. we do here. So, yep. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Um, I don't even know what we'd name it. But let's talk <laughs> about names. Hackaday's. Get a little bit of story. Yeah. On Floss. <laughs> And, well, let's face it, uh, less than stellar <laughs> <Names>. solutions <laughs> yes. for naming things, man. Open source projects have a long, sorted, history, cov, killed, and khaki games. Hey, that was KDE <laughs> for the first six years. Come on, everything. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> that, that joke was real, man. But, you know, we, we do have to deal with things like GIMP. Come on. 100%. Yeah. And... I, I was reading this article, and this is just going through like some of the issues, like naming projects getting renamed, or maybe arguably being named something better. And we were talking about just general graphics stuff, and I was like, hey, man, there's an open source thing called... It's like, I don't know how this person's going to take me saying the word GIMP. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, that's a thing. <laughs> so I said so the GNU image manipulation program. <laughs> and when you hear immediately, oh, Gim. Mm. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but they do talk about Glimpse, which is the mm -hmm. hard fork of that, uh, the GIMP project. And like, hey, we're going to try to redo the UI and everything. Basically, like GIMP shop. GIM, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it it's... still confuses me when I see people running GIMP in all one window. I'm like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> that's GIMP shop that's is the good Photoshop for those... layout. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so I, you know, the, in the, at the end of the article, they talked about how, um, uh, you know, how how do you think uh, the naming conventions should be under Linux for the applications? And I still feel feel it's the original creators of the open source projects that um, that they created to name them. But it would be nice if they would get advice from other developers and the community. <laughs> Because, you know, some of our open source apps we love so much don't have the best names, such, such as the GIMP and um, eLinks and Lynx, which are both terminal web browsers with similar names. <laughs> that, that's annoying. Um, and one of my favorite apps that I am using right now, the GUVC View video webcam app, is extremely hard to say. <laughs> <laughs> they could come up with a better name for that one. And uh, Ven touched on uh, KDE. Yeah, KDE was originally the cool desktop environment, which I think is actually kind of nice. But it was renamed to the K desktop environment. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> That's the, even more silly things. Like, you know, the difference in between P Python 2.7 going to like Python 2.8. You're like, no, no, we can't make it. We got to call it, what is it, Thoughten? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really? <laughs> really? Check this out, man. Like Python. Yeah, go ahead and do that clean break, but don't confuse people. Python 2.8. Let's call it Python 2. Point Weasel Smasher 9008. Yeah. Done. <laughs> then you're going to have that same issue with like Perl 6. Better name for Perl 6? Gary. <laughs> Solve the problems. <laughs> Gary. <Just> Gary. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the whole uh, naming thing, yeah, if you've been in the Linux community at any point, you, chances are you've found yourself in that discussion. And yeah. like uh, GIMP, uh, there's now a fork, Glimpse, uh, which is based solely on the fact it's like, yes, GIMP is great, but the name is, well, it's a bit... Gimp. I've so, always uh, felt like <laughs> if they would just own it and like put him in the mask with the zipper. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down Actually, with that. go full right, on latex. Right. Like, <laughs> just own it. Yeah. <laughs> but no. Uh, so yeah. As much as I know that Glimpse and that name was uh, born out of the current trend of avoiding offense to everyone, it's honestly not a bad name. It, mm -hmm. it is a visual name. It's something that you glimpse with your eyes, and it is a image manipulator. So, yeah, yes, makes it, sense. It, that's a very good name. <laughs> I, I honestly like that name better than the game. This is one of the things you really do run into. But like when you first start a project, I get it. You know, let's come up with a silly name. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. this is never mm -hmm. going to be a real thing, so well, let's just call it something yeah. stupid. You yeah, you, you that's know it. That they don't even. know. Feel free. I know somebody's going to correct me. I was like sitting around. I was like, okay, we got to come up with something for the word GIMP. <laughs> what can we call okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what do we call it? GIMP. Right. Okay. GIMP. Okay. Acronym that. Yeah, right, right. We, we got to make it legitimate. <laughs> that was a night of drinking. Probably, I don't know, pure speculation. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we got to get into a slice of pie. But before we do that, a little bit of shameless self promotion and. Uh, um, Dude. We're going to start off with our merchandise. If you want to support the show, this is a good way to do it. And wear something that will anger and confuse those around you. <laughs> Starting with Hell Elks, our three face t shirt, and the classic for this show, Weekly Daily Wednesdays, Francophile, Yay. and my new favorite in the mail <laughs> Lonely Penguin. My Lonely Penguin. <laughs> he, he is the new Linux mascot. Use me. And it's kind of brilliant. Available, as always, in our two primary colors. Dark yes. and not dark. So. <laughs> Strawberry and licorice. Strawberry yeah. and licorice. <laughs> Very good one to pay yeah. for. <laughs> licorice. You're a monster, man. That's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, 
We got a couple of other hot things. Just we got a support button right there. We have Patreon, Libra Pay, merchandise. We got wish zones for everyone. Bitcoin, <laughs> yes. digital yeah. money, and a gang of affiliate links, including the Humble Bundle. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of stuff through Amazon. That Amazon's like, you can't say that supports the show, so I won't. Um, that's got a brilliant. <laughs> okay. <laughs> done. <laughs> Understood. But uh, the best way to kick us some coin, if you like what we do, it helps pay for the bandwidth, what we do on the show. It's patreon.com forward slash letting scheme cast under into a beautiful party patrons getting early access to some things that we're testing out. I just did a hot, fresh studio tour for September 2019. If you want some of that mm -hmm. behind the scenes actions, we have several tiers and everything gets you access to our discord. If you like uh, what we do here and just having chats, that's where we're at the other six days mm -hmm. of the week. But Pedro, I've added two new goals to Patreon and yeah. one of them is just to spite myself it's kind of a dare <laughs> oh god what did you do <laughs> skyrim <laughs> we'll get to that well <laughs> the big one is one thing we're looking to do is because yeah. uh, pedro and i started out with a thing called meet the freemans mm -hmm. and that's when we figured out we could play synergy synergy mod so we could play half-life 2 in cooperative mode like, yeah, that's yep. boring. Let's play it in the hardest possible mode and try to beat it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which we did. It, it, it was us. Admittedly, we had to skip a couple of levels. <laughs> that's because the levels were actually glipped, though. They, they yeah. were bugged, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't from lack of track, trust me. We spent an hour in those levels so or, until somebody could yeah. like, this one's broken. Duh. <laughs> So we're going to continue rocking and rolling with that concept of trying to get through a game on the hardest mode possible with Wolfenstein. During blunts, <laughs> we're, we're going to burn okay. a heretic purchase for your amusement and our suffering. Stay Aww. tuned to that. And a much more distant goal. I've been threatening to do this for like two years. I've never beaten <laughs> Skyrim. And I thought it would be interesting to try to beat it live with the help of community, making balanced interactive decisions. So there mm -hmm. is now a goal for Skyrim job. It's yes, I, I especially look forward to you asking, okay, so what should I specialize in and what should I go See, with? Th that's what everyone's saying different things. Dude, this is where it's going <laughs> to screw me over because I don't do the magics. I don't do the archeries. I do the like, mm. realistic. Give me a sharp stick. All right, let's do it this way. Poke, poke, poke. I will poke, poke with the stick. <laughs> So having other people say, like, oh, you got to pick that and that, that it's, it's going to be a nightmare of endless, <laughs> endless entertainment that I'm clearly looking forward to. Um, all yeah, right. that's it. All Thanks right. everybody. Before Keep being awesome. To, what do you got? Go ahead. Bring it. Just, uh, mm -hmm. need to, uh, thank Simcha for the five bucks. Thank you very much. And, uh, Hoggle 88 Hoggle for the 15 bits and, uh, thank evil you. PLA for the sub. Thank you all very, very much. <laughs> Yay. Oh, all right. Remind me next week and we'll cut on like the really crazy blinky things during the yeah. <laughs> Okay. We'll make it nauseating. We'll make it look for like three minutes during next week's show. We'll make it look like the people we make fun of. All right. <laughs> it's a slice of pie, ladies and gentlemen, because it's getting that time of season, man. Uh, I don't know if I'd eat that one. I hope that was the template, because if that's not, I have genuine concerns about the person that took that much time. But <laughs> streaming pie, do it yourself. IRL Yay. streaming backpack with a Raspberry <laughs> Pi 4 and Speedify channel bonding technology. Giggity. Awesome. <laughs> this <laughs> comes from speedify.com in the show notes go check it out but it's a backpack what well, something you can put in a backpack that's really a lot smaller in a backpack you could put this like in like a fanny pack even hotter it is currently limited to 720p at 24 not because that's a limitation of the raspberry pi 4 it's just when they've tested it at 1080p 60 it kind of overheats, Brad. Uh, no. Nah. Yes. So, Raspberry Pi 4 overheating. No. Nah. Listen, yeah. man, this, this is one of the first reports, so don't don't knock it. Uh, they are currently using the Elgato cam link, which is the USB 3 dongle. That, even though it's got Elgato on it, will work on Linux. It's just a V4L2 device like any USB 3. Yeah. All of those are going to work on Linux. Plugged in with the uh, Speedify channel bonding software to combine it. It's cellular, so you could take like cellular or USB network dongles and it just ties everything together and sends it through their VPN. Jill, 
What would yeah. all this magic cost me? Thousands of dollars, right? Oh, no, no, no. It, it's around $600. It's the, the cheapest bonded streaming backpack, you know, you can get. <laughs> the, the next one up was $1,000 more. And normally, you know, some of these backpacks are like twenty grand for this technology. Oh, yeah, the old so, live views? Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah. hey kids, if you want to go to sleep, I can walk everyone through this FFM and make them in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I was really excited about this. You know, we should actually think about making one of these for for our Linux Gamecast interviews and shenanigans at scale. I think this would be really, really fun to do some live streaming with. <laughs> We'll get to it. Yeah. What are you waiting on? Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was looking at the parts required and I'm like, hmm, oh, I wouldn't build I... it like this. I'd build it much better. Um, yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, no, $600 for yeah. something like that. They even mention uh, in. And we're the talking article, $600 like... in with the camera, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with, with the, the camera. camera. Yeah. Uh, they were saying, yeah, with the. The cheapest one you could get that's similar to this would be the Live View Solo, and that's a mm -hmm. thousand bucks, basically. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, if we could rig up like a shoulder cam so it's easy to chase people. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then we can just chase Jill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> be great. That would be fantastic. <laughs> That's a brilliant piece of kit. Uh, before we get out of here, we do have something I, I definitely think we all kind of went back and was like, I remember playing that game a lot more expensive hardware. Yep, like oh, yeah. a lot more expensive. <laughs> See, back when this game came out, uh, I was still on a Pentium 4 desktop, but then I upgraded to a Core 2 Duo. And then it's like, oh, I can play the game now at a, re uh, a reasonable-ish um, frame rate. And this fine, insane gentleman right here decided, you know what? Let's install Doom 3 on a Raspberry Pi 4 now, and see how much it works. Can, this has been done on a Pi 3 B+. Yes, plus. It, it was already uh, possible to play it in a Pi 3. But here, they're playing with ultra graphics. All they've disabled were the shadows and a couple of the... Um, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, they're staring all over that video. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so they had to do that because the GPU in the Pi is very limited. So they were hitting that bottleneck and you can actually see it. They have the CPU uh, and the FURPS counter at the top there. Uh, and it's like they turn around, the FURPS drop by like <laughs> half. Instead of 60, they're running at 30. And the CPU is like, yeah, I'm do it at like 25%, you, you got more. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yeah, the bottleneck there is very much on the uh, the CPU. And when MT uh, was was the one who posted this on Discord, it's like, yeah, I, I remember playing that about as well as they're playing right here on my old Core 2 Duo system with an yeah. FX, what was it? Uh, I think it was a 5600GS. <laughs> Man, I... <laughs> It was some old, I mean, this, it was definitely a video card before what you would consider a video card. You know, it was like that single slot, no mm -hmm. anything had a fan in the middle and video card. Yep. Um, but here we are, man, on an $9 computer. Now, is that that border, that would be like borderline playable? Yes. And if mm -hmm. they lowered the graphics from ultra to like medium and they actually had like the lowest definition shadows, the game would look a bit better. So, mm -hmm. and it'd probably run a lot better too. <laughs> well, also, if they played it properly, that's where you just walk backwards into every room and start shooting. <laughs> yep. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot easier. That That's an interesting thing. Um, do you think the 4 Plus will finally get to like straight up 1080p 60 locked? No problems. With uh, one of those teeny tiny little tower coolers on it, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to yeah. take. All right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, if you get experience uh, playing Doom 3 on Pi, send us a note. <laughs> yeah. You can absolutely do that very easily by using our little contact form, what we have on LinuxGameCast.com. It's cleverly hidden under the contact button. And make sure you're, the show you're sending this to is LWDW. So you can also send some hate mail for that Saturday show, What We Do, or ask Jordan for relationship advice, <laughs> if you'd like. <laughs> but yeah, if you do have some feedback, if we did something wrong, if we did something right, if we didn't do something you'd like us to do, feel free to send it our way, and we will 
happily read it we right will definitely here, take a look right at now. it. Now, we do encourage <laughs> yeah. everyone to, if you want to leave a YouTube comment, that's fine. We just, if you want to make sure that we see it, this is the way to do it. Oh, you yeah. Know, <laughs> this is guaranteed. That we'll definitely. actually be able to read it and it won't be like lost <laughs> to the wind. So, Craig, man, Chips. Yeah, uh, so Chipsy had uh, something yeah. to do about Volumio. Yeah. Not sure if you guys ever looked at Volumio for Slice of Pie. Got a neat update where a bug caused an issue in a plugin. And they released a new version in like three days. Now that's fixing your mistakes. So what's Volumio? Um, hipster music blue. Oh, yeah, cool. Chip yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, Chipsy. a chipster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Also, it's like flack and all the things. Look at that. That that I love Ooh, that. That's oh, like, yeah. yeah. So smooth. <laughs> no, Joel, the, the ground's not shaking. It's just this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Fix your JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. But I understand why uh, Chibs tangos with it because it's something you can run on a pie. Um. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had an issue with that API with Cubuzz or whatever that was. They were like, yo, let's get it fixed. And there wasn't like a, some dead project type stuff. So it's like, good on them. Good on nice. them. Nice. What mm -hmm. do you use to play your music, Pedro? Because if you Audacious. don't... Audacious. Hipster. How about you, Jill? <laughs> um, actually, I still use uh, XMMS. <laughs> oh, that's even more hipster than me. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Jill wins. <laughs> It's still my favorite player. <laughs> but do you use the default black and blue theme? No, no. I go back I to the original Winamp uh, theme. Oh, God, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> and then when you, you zoom it in, it gets all pixely. <laughs> yeah, I, can, I can kind of be down with, like, VLC. Honestly, if I'm listening to any music, like, throughout the house on the Sonos, which is the only time I'd be listening to music, it's okay, Google, that's turned into my music player now. Yeah, no, yeah, tell Google to play some YouTube videos or play <laughs> some playlist that you have in your library, and it does a pretty good job, at least with my voice. <laughs> well, I yeah. scream at my devices <laughs> all the time. Just, just it's like the... every now and then, it'll really is like that. That that's nowhere near what I said, Google. But all right, okay. <laughs> it it's no fun because I when I did that ad campaign for Amazon, they gave me a uh, mini. Alexa thing, not like the big fancy mm -hmm. one, but the the Echo Dot. Well, the bigger one than the Dot. It's got a got oh, speaker okay. in it. It's just <laughs> right. not like the big fat Echo. But that works when you talk to it. It's not with Google Home. If mm. it gets it the first time, I think it verbally. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> like legitimately i do and i realize what i'm doing but i am grateful i just in case robot overlord like save me i said thanks a lot and um <laughs> yep <laughs> okay last but not least uh andrew writes in kx studio vin if you haven't noticed kx studio ha mm -hmm. has moved its repositories no new updates will come for the old one fyi and the isos are going away too to which I went to the web zone and looked, and yes, it is. Ben, what's KX Studio? It's music stuff that music people music with on Linux. Portuguese um, pe people music with, yes. He moved yeah. to Portugal, so he... <laughs> <laughs> oh, he moved there. Why would you do that? It was the cost of getting you out. All right, okay, cool. <laughs> the price had to be paid. A token was owed, Pedro. <laughs> but... Yeah, KX Studio is an all-in-one package. I know I've recommended it on this show mm -hmm. for anyone looking to set up a multi-track interface jack and Audor and sequencers, MIDI sense or anything like that. And uh, yeah, Falk TX has been the sole maintainer of this project for billions of years. And there's been like a lull on hiatus. So this is good. It's still there. ISOs are going away, but they were based on like Ubuntu 14, so no big loss there. Mm -hmm. The new repos required Debian 10. I'm good on that. I'm not messing with it. I was tempted, very tempted, because, you know, the current setup I have is not going to get updates on that repo until I change the repo. Debian 10, production mm. box, unfortunately and begrudgingly, 
not broke, don't fix rules apply. And that irritates me <laughs> as uh, I believe it was Ars Technica that quoted me on Twitter. It's the good <laughs> kind of boring. Debbie and Tin. Yeah. <laughs> um, not just Twitter, <laughs> on Facebook too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, maybe they did it on Facebook. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I think it was Nori noticed it. It's like, um, Ven got a mention by Ars Technica. It's like, what? Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yay. I, yeah. I social media. Like, I, I seven you're, social media. Sometimes eight. You're a reader, Ven. <laughs> Not a producer or broadcaster. I can't read. <laughs> but if you look in the interwebs, you can still find uh, KX Studio based on Ubuntu 1804. It's just 1804 <laughs> with the KX Studio stuff pre-installed Don't. and the old repository set up. So you'll mm. need to move the repository to the new one to find Use, new updates. Yeah, if you have it installed right now and nothing's broken, you're yeah. good. Mm. Leave it yeah. alone. Do not touch unless you're like, hey, man, I want to do it. Now, it should update without any issues, but you're going to be getting updates to a lot of stuff like uh, you're going to get updates to Jack, Carla, Cadence and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. probably a door. I don't I think a door's in there. Don't. <laughs> if it's working. This is like. Yeah, if it works. <laughs> yeah. The. <laughs> Jackbox, go watch your um, studio tour video. That thing doesn't have internet access. All right. That's how serious I am about everything's working fine. All right. Good. Yep. Yep. Then it got imaged. Mm-hmm. We're done with that. It's one of those types of things. Hey, we got to bounce out of here. Thanks again for everyone yeah. showing up. And we'll be back next week. You can, you can't smash that bell. What do you smash on Twitter? Uh, smash that Heart. follow button, fam. The follow button. <laughs> a follow <Yes>. heart. <laughs> yeah, there's a follow button. Uh, yeah. Seriously, if you're watching us on Twitch and uh, you enjoy what you saw, leave us a follow and uh, you'll get a okay. notification whenever we go live. What, what if I don't enjoy? What, what if it's mild interest? Then what do I do then? Mm-hmm. Um, if this was Saturday, I'd have an answer for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, that would that that question would be like, so Pedro, what if I hate watch the show? <laughs> no, if you hate watch the show, there's a sub button there. You can totally use that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we got to roll some credits, everyone. Awesome. Out of here. And thank right. you, yes. um, XLT1 for the the sub to Evil Pie and. Uh, that notification went away so there's another follower oh there it is gonzo 2000 thank you for the sub <laughs> hey gonzo <laughs> yeah so x salty he he sent a sub to evil pla <laughs> thank you x salty you're awesome he's been so supportive awesome <laughs> And we love and all our producers. And thank you, of course, to all our producers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and all our executive producers. Thank you for all and the love. And our <laughs> fine, upstanding cannibals who uh, keep providing some really, really nice hardware that we are really not worthy, but we appreciate it nonetheless. Yeah. 